I, uh, about 15 years ago, I, um, I was an a I, I was a, an addict. I was, um, I was, uh, my main addiction was to food. I was a food addict. Um, so I had compulsive overeating and, you know, working as a... Um, so it was 15 years ago, working in the, um, working in the stock market, and then suddenly I had kidney failure. And I uh, went to the Royal Free Hospital, and it was like I was facing death in the hospital bed. Uh, the doctors weren't sure for a while. And um, I had a spiritual experience in the hospital bed. It was a heavenly spiritual experience, like a timeless spiritual experience. I actually heard a voice, and it said, um, find a spiritual solution. I wasn't interested in spirituality uh, before that point. But it was so profound, that experience. Um, and I kind of joke that it didn't tell me where, how, you know. So I, I did go to lots of, lots of uh, different uh, groups at the time. But um, so I was going to all these groups trying to find this spiritual solution because I knew I was very ill. You know, I had uh, food addiction, I was in my body, and I had kidney failure. I was in a machine eight hours a day to keep me alive. I had asthma, uh, I had gout attacks in my feet where I had to use walking sticks sometimes because the pain was so horrific in the feet. So it was really quite hellish, both uh, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, mm. you know. Uh, and, but I had that spiritual experience. So I went to all kinds of groups um, exploring London to try and, you know, which group was the right one? What was the right spiritual path for me? Didn't tell me. Uh, I did go to... Um, okay, so I went to a spiritual group and I had a mentor his name was Hans. He gave me a DVD of a man to watch. And when the man was on TV, I had this kind of bliss, like this kundalini, this kind of like tingling up my spine. And I knew then that this man would be very important for me. His name was, um, his name was Dr. David R. Hawkins. Um, now, he um, uh, had an interesting background. Um, he had a background, his original spiritual roots were he went to something called um, a 12-step fellowship, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, for addiction. And, uh, and he got a sponsor. His, 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 his sponsor was, for anyone in 12 steps, his sponsor was Bill Wilson, um, the founder of the 12 steps, which is employing spirituality for addiction. Anyway, um, I had got this spiritual experience with his... Um, watching this DVD, so I knew he'd be my spiritual teacher. He became what I would call classically in spiritual literature enlightened. Um, he did first the 12 steps, then he became drawn to A Course in Miracles, and he became A Course in Miracles teacher uh, as well, and teached his own uh, thing on enlightenment as well. So um, I knew because I'd had that spiritual experience with him next, that that would be the path I would do. I had food addiction, so I went to a 12-step program for my food addiction. I, did, I developed some spirituality from there. I followed uh, Dr. Hawkins' teachings. Um, he goes into the map, uh, he, he, he talks about levels of consciousness, which you can measure via kinesiology, muscle testing. So he, he got a map, how you can progress up the levels, you know, um, where the lower levels are things like guilt and shame and fear. And as you do your spiritual work, you progress up to, for example, fear and pride. You do some more spiritual work, then you're getting to levels where your constant inner states are getting towards acceptance, peace and love. And then enlightenment, which is the um, dissolving of the ego, which is the highest level. So I went through, through all of those and how, how different spiritual teachings are at different levels of spiritual truth you know, 12 Steps, um, A Course in Miracles, The Teaching of Enlightenment. Anyway, so I had that spirit, so I followed his teachings very, very quickly. Um, why? Because, you know, my, my, um, I was in such a dark place, you know, kidney failure, um, you know, negativity, uh, suicidal thoughts, um, not, you know, the food addiction. I mean, it was just horrible, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. But, you know, I had hope. These spiritual experiences were starting to occur first in the hospital bed, then with Hawkins. Um, so the path I went to 12 steps, he was of course a miracles teacher. Now, no, I mean, he did, he was an alcoholic, but he went to AA and that stopped in a 12 step program. But 
He also had about 20 physical ailments in his body. You know, things like uh, avarian, um, avarian flu, which is bird flu, uh, which at that time, the 1960s, 70s, you know, was, uh, had very low probability of being cured. He had all these illnesses, um, heart, heart failure, all kinds of things. So his prognosis was very bad. But he employed the Course in Miracles, um, and um, I won't go into it, but mirac miracles happened for him. And all these 20 illnesses left just by employing the Course in Miracles. So I knew that I was being led to his teachings. Um, so, of course, I did the 12 Steps and the Course in Miracles. And I had kidney failure, um, gout, horrific asthma. And when I did, uh, follow, did the Course in Miracles, 12 Steps and his teachings, you know, you know, I had, a, I had uh, the gout just left um, uh, after some years of work. The asthma, I was discharged from the asthma clinic. I had a transplant. I'm not on a dialysis machine anymore. So I, I also had miracles occurring with my health. And the food addiction stopped in 12 steps. So all these miracles were occurring. So it was like I was being led, you know, um, through that. And I had absolute faith that what he said was the truth. And as I followed that, um, the, the Course in Miracles is a fundamental part. Then, um, also this guy Hans, very instrumental, he directed me to another spiritual teacher. His name was Muji. He was a guy in Brixton at the time. And um, he teaches what you'd call um, self-inquiry or non-duality or enlightenment, whatever you would want to call it. And I met him and... and um, I met him for a one-to-one -one and had a uh, white light spiritual experience as he asked me. Essentially, what the questions were, I'm paraphrasing it, but what are you beyond your thoughts is essential. What are you beyond your thoughts? And as he was doing this process with me, I had a white light spiritual experience. Um, that's the most profound experience, white light. It's uh, only describable as infinite power, light and love beyond description. Um, so. Hence, that was the thing. And um, that's briefly. So I, I experienced miracles just by following spiritual, spirit, the spiritual, mm, I don't know what you call them, spiritual principles, spiritual, spiritual knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So that's my story. Now, because I come from like really, really dark place and also extreme physical challenges, addiction, very, you know, negativity, you know, it's like, oh, Course in Miracles, you can, as you do the Course in Miracles, all your illnesses leave. Yeah, you, know, you know, so I worked it, you know, I really like, now this is controversial, but uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins has his own slant on Course in Miracles, but he said, you know, uh, the lessons are really important, you know, to, you do your lessons every day. Um, so for more or less, I'd say the last seven years, I've been doing my lessons every day. I, I, I do them and, you know, I've had so many miracles occur through the application, and uh, the text is also lovely. Um, and, um, and that's why, I, and partly why this group is here, because I've achieved, I have had so many miracles just to share, um, that miracles have happened, really, miracles have happened. Also members in this group as well, as they've applied like um, uh, spiritual stuff, have had miraculous stuff happen with them, their health and, and other areas. And, um, and with relationships as well. Okay, so that's a quick intro. Now, Dr. Hawkins gave a... Now, Lesson 14, depending on how familiar or unfamiliar you are with the Course in Miracles, Lesson 14 says things like, God did not create uh, cancer, so it's not real. Yeah. Or God did not create war, so it's not real. Um, and... Uh, Hawkins modified it. I think he made a slightly more atheist-friendly version of it, which was, um, I cancel my belief in cancer. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Um, if you've had um, spiritual experience, that connection to um, stillness, timelessness, peace and light, then that's, the in that's your infinite being. You know, you can... But, all that is um, locking us in. So the other thing is, you're only subject to what you hold in mind. So any negative belief that you hold in mind, you're subject to. It creates, you see. So if I hold a belief that um, I have kidney failure, and I believe that, then that's what will be created. 
uh, feel free to ask questions. So it's been, and um, so it's the belief held in mind. Um, if I hold a belief I have asthma, uh, then I have asthma. For me, how, does, how do illnesses or addictions or, or dark energy, um, for me it's the thing of, it's that the ego for me, I'm giving my own view, is it's, um, it's correlated to how much suppressed feelings I, I'm holding within. And it's also a correlation to how many belief systems I'm holding in mind. So those are the two major factors. Like, um, when I was in deep addiction, suicidal, and my health was falling apart, for me, at that point, I had what I'd call it a highly inflated ego. What does that mean? It means that I was using in different ways with food and, and other addictions so as not to experience my feelings. So that meant there was a huge backlog of suppressed feelings. So I'm going down to the lower vibrations constant shame, guilt, fear, anxiety, panic, paranoia, my health falling to pieces, all of that stuff is at the very bottom levels. It means that in some ways I've been not feeling my feelings, so they've, they've, uh, it's like a huge suppressed reservoir, plus I'll be vibrating at a very, very low level. So uh, at that low vibration, um, I'll also be tuning into a, a kind of a negative vibration of all the negative thoughts. You know, people that fear or paranoia are just quite common. You're afraid of everything, everything seems to be falling to pieces, life is unmanageable, that's the, the dark levels, you know. So, uh, and the belief systems, you also tune into those belief systems and you have a lot of be negative belief systems at that level. So that's just a common thing at the bottom rung. Um, and I, I experienced that. It's, it's not. It's not pleasant. <laughs> it's not pleasant. Suicide, uh, addiction, uh, uncontrollable addiction, darkness, and your health uh, falling to pieces, and machines keeping your life for eight hours a day. Don't recommend it. But um, but it's great as well. It great creates opportunity. Sometimes when there's great pain and great darkness, there's also great opportunity, as well. So if you change your thoughts, you change your vibration. Yes, the two aspects. So for me, going to the higher vibrations is correlated to um, um, recognizing how you suppress feelings, whatever mechanisms. It could be on food, uh, it could be in relationships, it could be on TV or internet or um, um, not allowing yourself to experience feelings. So often people will have certain mechanisms when some unpleasant feeling comes up. You know, you get uh, sacked, or you, you lose a relationship, or whatever it may be, someone dies, um, then huge feelings come up. If you don't um, suppress them with food, TV, alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be, um, then these feelings come up and are experienced and released, and then your vibration starts to increase. Plus, the, um, you need to let go of what are the, the fundamental belief systems you're holding on to. What was the question again? Um, oh, I forgot. I forget <laughs> questions. The question like, was, uh, yeah, if you so if you change your change oh. your thoughts, ch uh, change your change your life basically. So you, you you change how you you just do a shift in perception, and does that change all the vibrations that that come in? Well, I mean, basically, I've I've had experience of that of just me being on a lower vibration, and the stuff that was being attracted to me, it's only in hindsight I saw it, was just all imploding and negative. Yes. And, and coming out of that and trying to, even though I'm, I'm sometimes not always believing, I'm trying to constantly be in the solution and it's higher vibrations come in, better vibrations of people come into my life and it's, um, it seems that but how do you, how do you, con have you got to constantly cancel out the negative? It's a lovely question, yes. So, for me, um, so, like, the bottom levels, it's like you're tuning into a radio, plus you have your own belief system. So, let's say you have, at the bottom levels, you have a thousand belief systems. Mm. And also, um, you're also, like, at a vibration, so you sort of tune into a vibrational, energetic level, where they're typical common thoughts you know, at paranoia or at uh, fear or at addiction. So you're tuning in. So at that level, you're also being run by an energy field, plus you have your own individualized uh, negative beliefs, plus you have your 
pot of suppressed feelings. Mm -hmm. So if you let go of the feelings, automatically you'll go up to a higher vibration. Now, if you let go of your belief systems as well. Now, because we're talking of course, at the level of Course in Miracles, one of, one of the first uh, lessons in the Course in Miracles, of course, all your thoughts are meaningless. Mm -hmm. However, um, I mean, most people are familiar with things like Law of Attraction and The Secret and various other things that are going around and Abraham and whatever. Um, if you change your beliefs, yes, it's true, then you can, there are actually belief systems that underpin different levels of energy, you know, you get, you get, so you get, so you can definitely upgrade, it's definitely, you're at a different belief system if you believe love is good, then, um, you know, um, getting revenge on, on, on your enemies, you know, is a different belief system for a different level. So if you substitute um, kill your enemies to <laughs> love is good as a belief system, you know, it's definitely at a different vibratory level. But then uh, when you're getting to the levels of, because uh, of course in miracles, we're, we're really talking about dissolving the ego. All your thoughts are meaningless. It doesn't, it doesn't save any of the ego belief systems, even let go of your good belief systems. So then we're getting to the realms of intuition and uh, the silencing of the ego and tuning into something else. But doesn't to the ego put up a good fight? It puts up an amazing fight all the way it's through. It's so crafty how it pops up and pops out. You're squeezing it, I think it pops out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the ego will, will, will not like to lose ground. It's like at each level, you know, like Hawkins has written a book, um, Transcending the Levels of Consciousness. It's like when you go from shame to fear, there are certain classical... Um, tests, belief systems that you need to transcend that are classical from going from one level to the next level. And when you go from, um, when you go from fear to pride, or when you go from pride to courage, or from courage to love, you know, there's different tests and different, um, different filters and different um, thing gateways that you need to go. I'm using funny words here. But there's, there are different things you need to resolve to get to the next level up. So those have been outlined, and, um, and at each level, that's the benefit of having people who are a bit further ahead than you, is they can say, and that also happens in 12 Steps, in any spiritual group, they say, these are the traps, these are the things that can happen, these are the things that you need to look out for and be clear on, <clears throat> so as to give guidance to, to help you know, those who are a little bit less behind. So, yeah, but it's crafty all the way, and the ego doesn't want to give up. You know, he wants to be in control. Ego tells you lies. Ego tells you lies, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very, very crafty. And ego won't like this group, for sure. I <laughs> mean, um, and um, because at the level, of, I mean, the level, if you're interested in the Course in Miracles, that's one of the most threatening things you can do for your ego. Mm. I mean, even 12 Steps is much more friendly than Course in Miracles, where we're like chop, chopping the ego's head off, really. Mm -hmm. There's no room to hide. If you say something like, all your thoughts are meaningless, yeah. if you say all your thoughts are meaningless, the ego has nowhere to hide. So it's very scary. You know, and, and I quite understand why people wouldn't come back here again, because it's like, no, no, these thoughts are really important. I want to keep these ones in. You know, I can't say that, you know. Um, but it's different levels. I mean, definitely some belief systems are much better than others, but at the level of the course, you know, every belief system is up to discover what's behind all of these belief systems that the ego is holding on to. So, um, it kind of, um, I was reading something the other day that was saying, um, uh, I can't remember what it was, but it was about, you know, if you, if you have a difficult situation that you're, you're having difficulty resolving um, part of the acceptance as well as the words that you use around that situation, if you use more positive words mm. around it, it pushes it further on so that it speeds up the resolution of the situation rather than staying in the, this isn't going to work and this isn't. So it would appear that your, um, your words as well are um, motivators for shifting things around as well as your thoughts. Yes, no, no, words, you know, like... Um there, fun. Affirmation. Affirmations are very good, and you know, even through Hawkins' things, you can calibrate certain. You know, like 
um, love is good would probably you know kinesiology what kinesiology is muscle testing is your arm your muscle the, the muscles in your body stay strong when you say something which is affirmative life life enhancing so you, if you say something like you know love your neighbor that you probably have a strong arm yeah and if you say like kill everyone <laughs> you, 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 the muscles in your body go weak yeah. that's how the Muscle testing. Oh, we've got um, we've got actually a muscle testing expert in the in the room. Yeah. So um, so she someone can verify how kinesiology works. But you know, if you hold like a, an organic apple, and then you hold rat poison to your chest and check your muscle strength, organic apple, your body will stay strong. Hold uh, rat poison to your thymus, and your 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 energy will flop. The acupuncture meridians. So. I forgot why I was saying that, but um, your thought, your oh, words the thoughts. and your thoughts. Oh yes, uh, um, being um, so be careful what you say. Uh, we are what we think, and that kind of um, train of thought. You know, that whatever you think at some point resonates on uh, somewhere vibrationally. Um, I remember when I was a little girl, a friend of the family. I don't know why she said it. Don't she said, oh, "What we are is a mass of moving molecules." Um, I thought it was kind of peculiar later on, I thought, why did she say that to me? But obviously there was a reason because it stuck with me. But it's true because we are just resonating at a different vibration mm -hmm. to more solid objects. So when you think about um, everything, everything vibrates against one another. So, so we do whatever we think is vibrating on a different energy level as well. So we do have to be more mind mindful about what we think and say. Yes. So I mean, everything is you know any vibration which is higher than the neck, the lower vibration is better. So therapy is very very. I mean, if you're like suicidal and you go to a therapist, it's a very good idea. You know, that would be very helpful. Then you have like the spiritual therapies, um, like uh, um, Sedona method. You know, just letting go and the power of words with that. You know, could you let this go? Or would you let this go? When? So that's very, very powerful in letting things go. So the words have great power. I think also as well, when you're getting to the level of the Course in Miracles, you're invoking the Holy Spirit. Well, you're invoking God. You know, um, I pray for a miracle to see my neighbour differently, you see. Yeah. You're, and then it's, uh, you're, you're also opening the doorway for inspiration and intuition. Well, what's the difference between something coming from the ego and something, well, when I say the word intuition, it's very, very different. Because uh, the ego is coming from the bank of belief systems and thoughts and, uh, uh, and the ideas that stem out of the ego. When you say, I, I pray for a miracle to see this differently, or um, you, for me as well, even if you use the Course of Miracles, you're invoking spiritual strength as well, also in 12 steps. So something else, just, not just the ego is involved in the equation, uh, not just belief systems that stem from the ego, for example, um, you know, like Freudian psychoanal psychoanalysis, it would be, it'd be very, very good, but it's not invoking the spiritual realm, you know, where looking at your ego, projections, denial. But, I mean, Freud was an atheist, but he was still very, very useful. But you wouldn't say something like, you know, pray for a miracle to see this differently in Freudian psychoanalysis, because it's not at that level of vibration. So you're invoking... Like uh, we say, God is omniscient, omnipresent, and there's the other one as well, I forgot which is the three of them. But it's, God's everywhere and is everything. But um, uh, so you're accessing information which doesn't stem from the ego realm, from your ego or other egos. So you're coming from a totally, you know, if God knows everything and, and, and all things, then that information becomes available. You know, when you're when you're tuned into that to that realm, ideas uh, and things suddenly suddenly change or are released. And from people who do uh, spiritual groups, you know, miracles you call it miracles. It's not explainable by thinking or by thought systems that stem from the ego. So it's another level of vibration. What's which, the um the you know when you said you had that tingling in your spine? Of Kundalini, yeah. Is that what that is? Because I get that a lot. The tingling on the spine, it's a very, very good sign. Yeah. You're, definitely, you're definitely above, mm -hmm. you're definitely integrity. It and kind of goes up my whole... That's right, yeah, that's the Kundalini rising. Is it? The Kundalini no, rising. Okay. Is it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, Kundalini. It's a very good sign. We've been getting Kundalini. Enjoy it. Yeah. 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 I, get it. I get it a lot. Good. This yeah. is a very good Enjoy sign. Enjoy it. Go for it totally. If you have the tingling up the whatever make get, allows you tingling up the spine, what you should do more. It it, it's it's it's. It's it's the it's the rising of the spiritual energy and also the um, also at the same time from Hawkins research, research it's the, the the building of the etheric body the spiritual etheric body those who are who are highly in the ego don't have an etheric body they don't have Kundalini rising they are in you know I'd call it the dark realms <laughs> the devils in the dark realms. <laughs> So they don't. They don't. They, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and um, at that at that realm, everything is dark. See, so for the lower levels, when you're in the lower levels of the ego, you're in a different world to the spiritual realm. You feel very claustrophobic. You're very tightly in your body. You see other people is very much localized in their bodies, and you have a lot of negative projections going around about yourself and others, like everyone's going to attack me, or everyone's going to judge me, or or, uh, you know, or I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's horrible down there. So when you start to embrace spirituality, um, that will be the start of the rise. But so usually it's very, very subtle in the beginning. So you wouldn't be aware of like tingling up your spine. That usually comes later, unless you're having a, a very fast spiritual awakening, in which mm -hmm. case it well, would I've been getting it probably for um, about eight years. So yes, it's, it's, it's years. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we have the, the, you know, most people know about the chakras um, and it's like the spiritual energy is just rising up and you're, it, it rises, now I'm going to say something controversial, no I won't say that one, I won't say no, a controversial thing, it. <laughs> it'll upset some people. No, I won't say it. Okay, I'll say it in a different way. No, 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 say what you meant to say. What else do you say? You, you'd, you'd be upset by it. Oh, really? oh. Give you a resentment. No. <laughs> okay. All right then. You you ask me. Right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably upset a lot of people. No. I'm not to that. No. But I I recommend allowing the kundalini to rise naturally, <clears throat> rather than to force it up um, uh, through. Uh, so as you do spiritual work, you see there's a natural rising of the kundalini. As you do your as you allow your resentments to go your angers to go, your unforgiveness to go. Um, the Kundalini just gradually rises up mm, of, of its own accord and, and, and things occur naturally. I think um, if you try and force it up, there can be negative consequences if you try and force it up too quickly, which may be unpleasant. And some, some, there, there may be ways to do it very, very quickly, but uh, my view is, and everyone can have a different view, it's that as you do general spiritual work, it just it just naturally goes up, and uh, it's it's a safer way to to allow it to go up. So that's all I was going to say. <laughs> My friend explained it um, yeah. because I I said to her that um, she's quite spiritual, and I explained to her what it was I was experiencing because I, I didn't know what it was, and um, and it seemed to be in moments when I was at real surrender, when I was really asking mm. for help, and yes. and it, just this this wave would wash over me of this tingling, and then. Just this wave, of, it, it was almost like a wave of emotion where I'd be suddenly in tears. Mm, right. um, and she said, that's, that's pure love yes. you're experiencing, mm. but she said, it's, it's you, you, too much of it in your view overpowering. So you, mm. you're really experiencing, because it's like, almost suddenly it's, it, it is, it's like I'm, I'm in floods of tears and, and I can't, ex it's just like pure emotion that's coming out um, and, and kind of gratitude and, and I'm not like that all the time, but it, it's it's just overpowering, um, and it's kind of been more consistent. High power. But I yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't I haven't been able to yeah, like you say. I, I don't know. I didn't understand. I thought it was like my my I don't know higher power or my spirit or something yeah, coming is. through yeah, and saying yeah. uh, this is this is. Yeah, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't understand it, so I, I, I just, I, I know when I get it, I like it. Mm. <laughs> and I want more of it, and then when I try to force it, I'm trying to say, please, you know, and I'm trying to get it, and it doesn't happen, and then when, when in a moment when I'm in true surrender, that's when, that's when it happens, when I'm really mm. on my knees, 
like really in a lot of pain sometimes and, and really asking for help and it will, it will just like, I'll get this feeling that it's it's okay and you know, it just kind of washes through me so it's good to know what it is. Well I still don't really know what it is but it, it's kind of some something ethereal or... It, it's, it's, the, it's the spiritual energy coming in, it's also going up the chakras. You, there'll be various issues, you know, unforgiveness, various issues at different chakras that you need to resolve and it carries on what, as you do the spiritual work. So is it spiritual, do you need to do chakra work on your chakra? No, chakras? no, you don't have to do chakra, just forgiveness, resentments, letting go of any resentments, okay. fears, control of the world, unforgiveness, that's, that's the, you know, um, in all areas of your life and, and, and it will continue to evolve, uh, uh, continue to evolve. So someone like... Um, <coughs> Uh, just oh, just around right, right the corner, near the, near the door you and came Eckhart in. Eckhart Tolle, who yeah. had the complete spiritual awakening that yes. he had, it would seem like he, all of his, his chakras opened at once because he had the mind, body yes. and spirit awakening all at once. So he went into that state of bliss for three years. Um, he's still in a state of bliss, but not as intense as the initial when it happened, he, it was just, he saw everything shiny and new, everything was, was like a new world to him when he came out of his... Um, he lived on the park bench. Yeah, That's so it, 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 it's, like, it's a bit like all the dominoes, kind of everything like that all at once and I suppose it's great spiritual teachers or, or Jesus or Buddha, oh, and yes. he had that moment where yes. everything just kind of, my, that's how my friend explained it to me, they're, they're the spirit and the, the body and the mind all open at once to that. It's just one awakening all at once, and that's why people do such intense, uh, I don't know, um, you know, meditations to try and achieve that state. Why can't we have it all the time? You can. You well, need to be enlightened. We're there all the time. <clears throat> yeah. Except that we imagine something else. Ah, <laughs> ego. <laughs> Imagination, but we can't bash ego. ego. We can't bash ego because that's also it's grace, it's part of life. Yeah. So Learned it doesn't exist. Ego. Also, ego is perceived. Also, can you love your ego to death? Yeah, that's why. Oh, yeah. 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 Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I hate yeah. it doesn't something that was like, really lovely. It's, yeah. it, I think it was. It, they said. Um, we're not humans, um, you know, going back to spirit, but we're, we're, we're spirits actually. This is the dream. Yes. Mm. We're actually still mm. in spirit, but this is the dream. And all our little beings are joined together. Mm. We're, 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 we're in, where are we? We are. Yeah. When I was walking down Oxford Street, I was like, people that are open. Yes. Yeah. 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 Not just the cute guys. It is amazing. But I remember when I first started doing the Course of Miracles and I kept thinking, first lesson I was like, what are they going on about? I don't understand. And then I found myself here the next week and thought, I need to be here. I <laughs> and then, you know, and then I, I felt like someone was pulling the rug. And now it's just like, it's just second nature now. You know? mm. Really like, oh, I don't know what I'd do without it. You know? <laughs> Need the lesson. Yeah. How do you know when it starts to shift though? Because at the moment I'm doing the lessons, I'm on 27. Um, yeah. And I don't know if I feel any different really. Yeah, um, yeah. gets rattled a bit. Doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get a little bit rattly, but I think I've always been like that around, <laughs> around you know, them out there. Um, but yeah, it, I don't feel really anything. Oh, um, I mean, it's Should like I? it's like all spiritual work. Uh, you just um, if you feel drawn to it, you keep doing it on good days and bad days, mm -hmm. and it's more the consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's not necessarily that every day you do it, you're going to get like a massive uh, spiritual awakening from it. But I mean, uh, as I've shared my my experience with it, it's been miraculous just to be consistent with it. And the Course of Miracles is just very, very difficult for the ego. I mean, it's normal to forget what the lesson is, not to understand it. Yeah. But for me, the important point is to apply it. I mean, if yeah. it says your, all your thoughts are meaningless, do it for two minutes, morning and evening. Mm. That, I mean, even if you don't understand why, you know, my thought about uh, this table is meaningless. 
my thought about this person is meaningless, my thought about the light bulb is meaningless. It's the practical aspect of it, and it, and it does work in dismantling, dismantling the ego. <coughs> Can I say something? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, you know, I was in this situation, I'm in the, I, I think about less than 50, but I do, I do double days or triple days, depending on how do I feel and if I want to move on or not. But after about a month, it kicked in, so I could, I look back, and I was like, wow. You know, it, uh, around the month, first month was like consistency, what, what Sabir said, you know, everything, just applying just whatever, you, mm. whatever, whatever your relation is with it or not, you know. But then it's just kicked in so, uh, I was just, you know, kicked, uh, kicked into a space or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, wow, and, 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 and from this higher level, um, of involvement as well, because you really feel it, you know. Okay. Then it's so easy, and then then, then questions, questioning actually lessons, questioning of the course, you know. And that was my experience anyway. Yeah. So, so I suppose uh, for everyone it's at different stages, when they actually start to feel a shift. Oh, I think that's like with every spiritual yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. you know, in like, uh, like when I was in my, you know, and most people in like 12 steps in the beginning, they can't stand it. They want to be out of there. But mm -hmm. at a certain shit point, you love it. You're on the peak yeah, yeah. And then that's the same with the Course in uh, Miracles. You know, there's a lot of resistance in the, in the oh, early sure. days, huge resistance. You don't want to do it. You want to run away. Definitely not. But at a certain point, a click happens. I think that's yeah. what you're saying. Same with meditation. Yeah. You know, if we do, yeah. I would crawl out and run away from meditating. Now I'm like, the best part of the day, mm -hmm. totally. In the morning, in the evening, cannot imagine without mm. going, you know, and just wow, it's best, the best high, you know. I was at the <laughs> drugs, I was at the two old <laughs> drugs, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> gone. <laughs> so, it's really, yeah. And I mean, this year has been amazing for me, the transition, transitioning from the old to uh, to current. And, and all these things I used to... It's funny because when I was on drugs as well, I was, I was praying, God give me that without drugs. Mm. I, used, I, was already, I already knew that, you know, give me that or similar thing without drugs. Because I, I knew that all my mates, they used, to, they used to take them and not really questioning. I was always with a book in my hand or always questioning what's going on and always watching what's going on with my mind. And I've got it, what I've prayed for uh, 10 years ago more or less, uh, if it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah. So, yeah, I don't need to deal with any more this stuff, so. <laughs> I went to see um, a, a Kriya, Kriya Yoga instructor, mm -hmm. yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I read the autobiography of a yogi, so I was, and that's what prompted me to go down that route, and I've been to a couple of um, um, meetings with, with um, the man who teaches it, and uh, so we did some meditation and it was quite really really powerful and uh, I said to him before we started I said oh, I'm doing the Course in Miracles and he went are you? <laughs> you know and he said this on par with doing the Kriya Yoga mm. it's the same 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 so you could Kriya Yoga is a really good way to get a higher high up spiritual enlightenment and he said but Course in Miracles is the same mm -hmm. you just do it differently we go like that we, but we meet like that. Yes. And I went, wow. So it's different different ways to do it, isn't there? Yeah. But this is a very powerful way to do it. It's very powerful. It's very, one of the one of the pathways to enlightenment. Yeah. Uh, and and but pe people who are in the know know. You know, when when you say it to them they go, Oh, that's very good. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he was very yes, yeah, very good. So yes. That, that was my selling point. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I did the uh, self realization. Mm. Oh, did you? A couple of years ago. Wow, yeah. 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 I found it quite difficult. It is very, yeah, very yeah, difficult yeah. to get the concentration. Yes, uh, with the. Um, I haven't done. Uh, I don't think I've done the self realization. But in terms of uh, Eckhart, I mean, anyone. There, I mean, you can. I mean, if you, I mean, some people. Ramana Maharishi was one of them who just became enlightened in, just in, a, in an instant. He just thought he was dying, and he went into the classical state of enlightenment. 
the air cart, um, and the teachers have enlightened. Some of them do have really fast, so mm. in an instant, it's like you're connected at the highest level, you know. And then you're, you know, like from my own white light spiritual experience, and I was, you know, and when I came out of that, I was in a state of absolute bliss, and everything was beautiful. And even on, a, on an autumn day, I thought it was summer because everything was so stunningly bright and beautiful, and you're just crying, looking at everything. Is this after you saw the white <coughs> yeah, light? Yeah, this was after the white light, yeah. The white did, light... Did you pass out, or...? No, apparently it? I was still sitting, and uh, there was the white light spiritual experience. Um, and the Course says something vaguely about it, you know, it's something like, if you were able to uh, experience, imagine what it would be like without the ego, and I, I did write it in one of my newsletters, It'll be like ten thousand times more than you, you can you can experience that you've experienced. Imagine your best moment in this planet in something like thousands of times better, you know. So you know thousands of times better than eating a donut as a food addict. You know, it white like spiritual experience. I think that's one of the great things. You know, once you find those spiritual experiences, you know that's the way. You know, and that addiction and the world is not. And as as uh, was being said about the world being an illusion. You know, is the world an illusion or a dream? It's just um, a different levels of consciousness. What's projected by the ego constructs a different le aspect of the dream for each individual. Uh, people with um, mania, you know, um, people that have um, not delusions of grandeur, but people that are not bipolar, but I can't remember what it is, where they go right off the rich, rich scale and they're really high up and people say, oh, they've lost their marbles, but they're so in love with life and gone off into their own la la land. They're, they're up there, they're in that, I think they're in that spiritual realm. They hit, they hit it, you know, and then they come back down again and go into depression. Yes, that, that happens when there's not, you see, when you... Yeah. It's not. It's not been resolved, you see, like for myself. <coughs> I haven't resolved, it was like grace, I had the white light spiritual, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I hadn't resolved all of my, all of my stuff mm -hmm. to, to hold that level. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different stuff, so when I had the white light, and the ego came back into, it was very, very easily it got tempted into um, experiencing the world again and hooking into patterns within the world and therefore losing that connection. So once you get, you know, one of the main things we were talking about with the self-inquiry is various mm -hmm. aspects in which your ego or thoughts get hooked in. You hook into the thoughts. But then aren't those experiences like a blessing because I've had like loads of spiritual experiences but then they are kind of given by grace in that moment as a blessing to show what's available what's possible or in that moment some cleansing happens and then of course for me ego will be picked up and there will be lots of ego kind of life based on ego but then it's through that light that then there's a realization there's something more and then that light mm -hmm. starts to work down through ego and, and hence addiction starts to drop out because of that experience so then it becomes a gradual process um, and, and hence my interest in not because you know fancy spiritual experiences I've had lots of them with kundalinis and, and things but it kind of then the interest shifts from spiritual experiences to okay this just here now mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. So, in a way, it's kind of inevitable that ego is picked up. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, I agree. I mean, um, if you have them, I mean, if you have a, a, a high spiritual experience, it usually tends to... Um, like, for me, having that white light spiritual experience, it, it, I was depressed for several months afterwards because the whole mm. world, mm. the whole basis of reality for my ego was just um, blown up and there was depression that all the things I thought in the world were real could not compare to what was experienced. So it was very, uh, the, the, afterwards well, when the ego was pulled back in there was huge, but also you're right, there had been like a detonating bomb yeah. put into the ego. So it's like you can't, you can't really, um, <laughs> you can't, you know, it's like your whole world, you, you, you could say that the whole world, you, the basis of your whole world had been shattered. And everything you thought, you know, you get happiness out of food, people, places, situations, careers, all of that. Is and also anything that you've sampled in the world never can compare to a white light spiritual experience, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, so 
forget forget all the addictions. I mean, it's, you know it's wrong in your heart from that point on. So, but then starts the process. But it, it does give you, I quite agree, um, a lot of power, and it orchestrates your life because there's huge power now to let go of that stuff which wasn't there available before. So then suddenly there is a great inner earnestness, but then there's the layers of the ego resist, as, as you were saying. Each layer of the ego starts to, no, 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 this, yeah. the world the, the is tempting. Yeah, yeah. The temptations within, you know, Christianity, the temptations within the world, you know, start to come up. Uh, and, um, and you, and, and, but then help also comes. You join spiritual mm -hmm. groups, yeah. certain books come into your life, certain spiritual teachers come into your life. So it's like God provides the pathway, but then there is work to be done mm -hmm. from the, the different aspects that the ego is still trying to hold on. And that's suppressing the Kundalini from rising further. As you let go of these unforgiveness, resentment, fear, control, you know, the, the, naturally your spiritual, and your set point, your natural spiritual vibration becomes higher than it used to be. You get used to, eventually you're just used to presence and stillness and intuition and, and love and joy mm -hmm. and beauty. So you start to become tuned into that, out of, out of the realms of the ego. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for those questions. So, oh yes, so, the like, like in Lesson 14, it actually does talk about, it's a, like a shared illusion, shared, shared belief system. We're in a, sh a shared insanity. <laughs> and the, co the collective, you know, the collective expressing of different, you know. Um, and the last thing I'd say, you know, you know, who, you know, once you experience spirituality, if you experience the Kundalini, I mean, you know, eventually you want to like, it's beautiful. And you want to, but you get to those higher vibrations, you're clearing, it's like grace, you know, and um, so it's the allegiance to clear out all the rubbish that's in the way. So to, to get more of the tingly Kundalini, well, to, or to eventually the, just, you just do all of the things that are around well, we know what to do. Yeah, it's Meditation just... Meditation and Course yeah. in Miracles. Cla lessons. Classical spiritual work. And then, and then you get used to higher vibrations. Um, so, I think at this point, I, I shared it last time. Okay, the, for those um, who are from the intellectual point, but I think it's really, really important. I talked about, like most of you have heard of the Heisenberg Principle. Heisenberg in science. The Heisenberg Principle. When a scientist, so most people th look in the world in terms of causality, like this is, is affecting that in the world. Like the reason, um, the reason um, the uh, dog is chasing the cat is because the cat came into view. Mm, right. or, or the billiard ball table. The reason one ball hits another ball is because that ball was hit there, and then that later in time it causes an effect that is there. Now that was the old. That's the basis of most of how people think. So this is like a cause and effect. Cause right? and effect, yeah. exactly. Causality, cause and effect. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Cause and effect exists in the world, and that's how the ego perceives the world. Cause and effect. So there's an explanation for everything, and that created that. Right. Yeah. So. Um, and that was the, the basis of Newtonian physics, but then Heisenberg, um, some years back, uh, they, they, they came, I think he, got, he won the Nobel Prize, but I'm not sure on that, was that if a scientist observes phenomena, the phenomena change, mm -hmm. just by the observing. If you observe it, the atoms are actually changing in, in the phenomena. So that means just the witnessing or the observing of phenomena means that, so actually it's not. Just human consciousness observing things means it's already changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that opens the doorway for spirituality. But that's like, like a scientist who, who is a reasonable ego. What would, what would happen if, say, someone who had no ego observed phenomena? Then you would start to have the miraculous occurring. Right. Someone who's that spiritually evolved. And that explains the miraculous. So, so in, that, in that way, that, ex that is the scientific doorway to explaining why the Course in Miracles works. And in fact, that if you clear away all your ego, then um, you'd be opening up your way to miracles. And, and that, in that power that comes through 
there's, there's like the average human consciousness observing something and then, it ch and then phenomena changing. And it's not much for a scientist, but if you had a saint um, witnessing something, who'd done all that spiritual work, the amount of power to change what's occurring would be enormous. But what if you had um, God? If God is the ultimate observer, then that would be the power for the manifestation of the whole of creation, if that makes sense, if you're with me. Yeah, can I ask a question? Yes, please do. Yeah. Because um, does God really observe this? You know? Well, I'm using languaging. Okay, you're um, using I'm using yeah. languaging. Mm -hmm. So God would be the infinite power source where the beyond all form, in the realm of the formless. It's like without any, any of this raw, illusory world, the power source would be infinite power, light and love, beyond description. But if there was form to be introduced, you could get the creation of the whole universe, yes? So you're saying that... Yes. Say there are same same events and they are watched by different, differently open people, so they will be affected in a different way. Yes, I mean, the, the events of those with, uh, you know, someone who's got no spiritual connection will have, uh, you know, will, most, most like, will be mostly an, an effect of their programming. Uh, um, however, those um, employing spiritual work, you know, are bringing in light, you see, into, like, a, uh, yeah, I'll talk about, you know, like Hawkins did research, like someone who, if you do, um, spiritual work, for example, this is through kinesiologic research, someone getting to the level of unconditional love, just doing spiritual work, um, is counterbalancing the negativity of like thousands of people below integrity in, in the darkness. So it means that um, someone at um, the level of enlightenment is counterbalancing the negativity of, of I think, millions uh, below, you know, that, are in the, that are below integrity. So it's just that light is now coming in, which has a thing, you know, like um, anyone who's gone to a spiritual group or been around a spiritual teacher will suddenly feel a lot happier, you know, um, in those places. They're much more positive because of that silent transmission. I always, when I, when I leave here, I get on the train, which is packed. Yes. And I ask God to bless everyone on the train, yes. even if they're yeah. drunk and disorderly. Mm -hmm. I still go, open up their hearts and let their light shine. <laughs> yeah. I say it, you know, make that connection, say, come through me and let them have the one most best day of their lives and wonder why they're having the best day of their lives. Because oh. God is coming into them. Yeah, that's you know? it, that's it. Yeah. You're being a channel. Yeah, yeah. Be happy, everyone, because I am. <laughs> you know, on the way here, I was seeing everyone as Christ, you know, in the Waterloo Station. Yeah. And, and I, I felt so good, you know, when everyone reflects. Sham says God's fast tracking my pain. And yeah. I like that. Yeah. God's fast tracking your pain. Yeah, because she's been in so much pain this year, and it's growing pain. It, yeah, you do get a lot of pain as you do spiritual work, as you as you're going up. Um, you know, when you you know, I've had that as well. You know, if you sort of try to see Christ in everyone, or what I do nowadays is um, because we're going to the place of formlessness, sinlessness. Sinlessness is actually for me at the highest level beyond the realm of form. Mm. You see, so we're going to the stillness. So you see the stillness. But at, with that one, I had that as well. I was in these twelve-step meetings, you know, seeing the Christ and everyone, and then I blissed out, you know, just mm. blissed out because. <laughs> <laughs> not true. But if you have, a, yep. yeah, I'm just just one of my thought, um, and I'm doing a bit of the Silva method. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the uh, uh, there's a wonderful way you start to your scalp go right through your body and find every organ and have them relax. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then you make, you start to do feet and you know, my feet disappear and every, every bit disappear. But it, it gets you to uh, a lovely part of formlessness. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you just and also bring the white light in. And, then, and it's just, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. I know that thing of disappearing because sometimes also if I get some thoughts of, oh, how can I do the situation? That, you know, w w you know, if I get any doubtful or negative thoughts, I remember. I think Mujie had a video that when you 
when you're nobody, you have no problem with anybody. Yes, like when you're nobody, you have no problem with everything. And it was that thing of, okay, now just, just be nobody, just, you know, don't mind, don't, that sort of thing. Um, and then everything is okay. <laughs> 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 so it's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually get a little peek of almost the afterlife of what it will be like. Mm. If you're Mm. You're really at peace. Mm. Is that called the silver method, did you say? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's quite old, I think. It is, yes, uh, it's been around for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it's funny, I, I, I got the tapes years, years ago, and uh, I only. Uh, uh, they, uh, they all disappeared from. except two, but they're the most important two for me oh, at this time. Yeah. And I just go into it and I thought, oh, see what this is all about. Now I'm doing it every day. It's kind of appropriate that they disappeared. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, then maybe I didn't need the others, I'm not sure. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds oh, they're in my apartment somewhere. Oh. <laughs> but I'm messy, so God knows where. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds, uh, sounds beautiful. That's a bad affirmation because I have got better. I have got better since I affirmed that I'm not not so messy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a miracle. Quite, yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I have a cleaner come in every two weeks, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I just want to say that I'm really grateful to be here. Really, mm. it, it's oh my god, to be able to freely talk, you know, yes, uh, about these things and meet people in person, you know, because normally I do Skype, which is cool as well. Yeah, but uh, it's amazing. Thank you. No, thank you for coming. Thank you, yeah. It's very lovely Brilliant. to have you. And I think there's something in a life of in just being there in person as well. The energy is more yes, intense totally, than, yeah. than yeah. through the internet. Uh, but the internet is nice as well. Um, and um, yeah, that's beautiful. And yeah, I love that. Get a glimpse of what it's going to be like. Uh, yeah, you know, it is. You know, as you, you know, one of the fundamental lessons in the Course of Miracles, which is, I'm not a body. I am free. For I am as God created me. So really, I, for me, it's like I'm not form. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not a form. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a form. Uh, I'm free, for I am as God created me. In mm -hmm. in the realm of the stillness, in the peace, in infinite light, love and power, and it's the the level of grasping of form from the ego that is layering you down into the deeper layers of illusion, yeah. of identification. I'm, I'm trapped in this physical body and I'm seeing all those other physical bodies out there. High levels of separation. So I think someone coined it separation anxiety. You know, yeah. so we, what we suffer here as humans. It intense separation. I'm so trapped in this body and all those people are trapped in physical locations. You know, and also we're going beyond time, as the Course says. Beyond location, beyond time, beyond form. What, what is beyond time? You know, what is beyond space and location? What is beyond form? Mm. You know, <clears throat> so let's, let's experience that. So it's not going to be a thing. It's not going to be identity. It's not going to be any aspect of the ego or right. any aspect of form that can arise and pass. Mm -hmm. um, and I love, um, you see, of course miracles I'd call, I'd call it's, it's mystical. You know, the mystics and, and, and what. And, um, not that I come from a religious background, but you know, this thing I often share, which links into Muji and the Course, you know, is um, Saint Fran the prayer of St. Francis. Um, and it's in dying that one is born to eternal life. What is eternal life, you know? And what can die? The, the limited, the form, dies. Mm -hmm. And then something beyond time that can never die, that is not subject to change, because form is subject to change. Anything that is a thing, subject to coming sure. and going. So what is formless, timeless, before time, before space, before location? So it's in the death of form, the ego and its projections, that one is born to eternal life. And he also said something else, which is, because he's a mystic, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. That's what I, it's a tool, it's not, it's a tool to get to place, but there's something that observes, that witnesses, and is eternally present, and is eternally still, but it witnesses all forms coming and going before it but it's not those things that come and go. It's a very fast way to dissolve the ego and stop hooking in to time, space, thoughts, um, stories, all of those things that quickly dissolve. That, that's the self-inquiry process. So, 
So this is the cancelling of belief. You know, let go of these, let go of the form you're hooking into. It's manifesting, and it's blocking you off from that intense love, light, the Kundalini rising, and the bliss. And as has been shared here, you know, uh, the ego will resist. You know, the ego wants to be addicted to form, to change, to control, to have its identity, to its projections. Ego will resist in different ways as you resolve each block. You know, and life, if you um, choose the Course of Miracles, it'll be like you want to be totally free. Oh, of course, sure. Course of Miracles means you, if, you, if you have a, an inner spiritual inspiration, it means you want total freedom, not half freedom. There's many spiritual courses out there which are half freedom, which is also good. But the course is like, for the ego, it's terrifying. It's total freedom. You know, it's like... Yeah. I, just, I just got off the... Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just got off a uh, four years relationship with another teacher. Mm -hmm. um, she was amazing and really lots of good changes. Uh, basically sucking me out of the... Uh, or helping me to, to get out of the uh, darkness, you know, the uh, addiction and was still mm -hmm. having a grip on me. But I realized that... Um, there's so much room for, like, I don't know what's the, what's the English expression, uh, for, for maneuver. You know, like, um, because Course in Miracles is so blunt and so yes. so so clear with, with its message that, okay, you can't even discuss this, you know, it's just there and whether you like it or not, it's this, and end of story. And, uh, the other spiritualities, as they, as they, as adventurous they 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 been and and funny and freeing and stuff. There was always some room for uh, what, what was the name um, conversation about that. Yes. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's talk this intellectuality. This this. Mm -hmm. You know. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Thank you very much. But I I, I felt cold. You know. To um, and it's the second time. Course in Miracles just appeared at the beginning of this year, uh, second time in my life. Uh, now I can speak English so I could uh, <laughs> read it because uh, 15 years ago my English was really bad and, uh, and there was no Polish translation. So they told me to do lessons, but uh, the lessons, yeah, but if you don't know the, uh, the idea, the lessons will not do much good, you know. So I'm back and I'm so happy because this is um, the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. you, you're going to have to translate it for your language. Oh, now it's, no, now it's done already. How was it? I've got all my phone. My phone is so packed with, with, with <laughs> stuff. You know, I've got both versions, I've got uh, audio version, I've got um, stuff like Gary Renard and, and all that stuff. So, um, and I love it really, you know. So, uh, uh, I admire that. If, you, if, it's not, if it's not your first yeah, language, you're doing the course. Yeah. I think if your English is bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, terrible, you know, because it's really terrible because when I read it, I cannot hold it in my mind. Yeah. It's like, what was the previous sentence about? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I prefer to listen yeah. because I don't have to, mm -hmm. I don't have to invest in, in looking and translating whatever. Yeah. I just receive it. So listening is much, much easier for me. Oh, absolutely. I think everyone has that. You can't remember your lessons because the ego can't remember them. If it's like, you know, I want to kill ego my neighbour, you, you can remember that all day. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's yeah, an yeah. ego vibration. Yeah. If you want to remember something like, um, uh, um, uh, what would be, you know, uh, uh, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm God created me, or whatever it is. You know, it's more, much more. I mean, if you do the course a number of years, it becomes easy to remember these things because now the vibration, they become easier. But and, in the beginning, they're, they're they're tough to remember. And I have the app on my phone, and it goes yeah. off every twelve minutes. Uh, you know, so it's I've got it here. And the lesson today is God is the strength in which I trust. Mm -hmm. and, it comes and I hear Beautiful. it go. I've got a little harp that yes. goes. Yeah, so I know oh, that's my and sometimes ego goes, me, you don't need to look at that. <laughs> you don't look at that. Stop it. Because all you're doing is recovery. And I think, oh yeah, I am. You know. And then I think, oh, what am I doing? So I, what I do is I like the lessons that come every 12 minutes because I am, it's keeping the ego, it's, it's slaying the ego, it's slaying the ego. That's but, awesome. Yeah, but some days, some days ego wins and goes, you don't want to listen to that. And then, and then I ring my friend and I go, I'm saying my lesson, but I don't want to do it, you know, but I'm verbalising it, so I, I know. 
I know that every day I do the lesson without fail. And That's brilliant. Yeah, and something's happening. Even if I don't want to do it, yeah. because the ego's going ha 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 in my head, I just do it. Because the way I'm feeling now, and um, I'm on lesson 47, from when I first came in, and I was like a deer in the, in the, you know, like a rabbit in the headlights going, what are these people talking about? And why am I here? And why have I come back it's next week? Why have I come back here, you know, not understanding what was going on and then feeling uncomfortable with it, going, I'm feeling even worse now. Why am I coming here? But knowing that something inside me was bringing me here and knowing that I had to be here. And now to, to this, you know, to ha that this is my remedy to keep the ego at bay. I, mean, I just recall, sorry, yeah. the, the, my, one of my first spiritual books was really kind of run over me, ended up in a tense. You know, I was just passing the bridge one day, just threw it out, I was like, I cannot stand it anymore, yeah. you know, I was just burning in my backpack. So yeah, I don't, yeah, that's yeah. funny, because yeah. it cost me miracles, one of the copies ended up somewhere as well, you know, I left it for, for someone else on the street, because I thought, I cannot have it, no, you know? <laughs> I just cannot have it. So I thought, I'm not going to put it in the bin, you know, I'm just going to leave it, maybe someone yeah. else will use yeah, it. But I couldn't have it, you know, like 12 or 13 years ago, I was like, no way. And someone's wandering around, they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I and I found your uh, your this group I found uh, three or four years ago. Imagine really? that. Yeah, the, or three years ago. The, yeah, the, yeah. I was doing it different. I've I've run. Or maybe not group. yours, but oh, there was there was a group running Waterloo. Oh, that's yeah. That's the lady. Oh, that's the lady. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it took me three years to actually come here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. always wanting, yeah. Yeah, so you're destined to come here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I said, as I, as I emailed you, you know, I was like, what is this? This is only resistance, you know, really nothing else. Because all these reasons come up, why shouldn't I go, you know, or there's other things to do. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, you know. Oh, this is like pictures passing through my mind, you know. Yeah. What's the value in this, you know. Let's start the email, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But I was afraid to call you. <laughs> call, yeah, yeah, I'm very dangerous. <laughs> not, not many people <laughs> called me. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, we, we'll do cancelling of beliefs now and uh, going around the room. So I've, said, I've had lots of miracles happen. Just any negative belief that you're holding, for example, you know, like. I cancel my belief in kidney failure. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. So I do that one. Plus, uh, I also do the Course of Miracles version as well. I interchange it. Like, uh, God did not create kidney failure, so it's not real. As in, uh, so you can do either or both uh, for any, any belief systems you want to release from you, whether it be physical ailments, mental things, like uh, I cancel my belief I'm untidy, I'm an infinite being, so oh, right. God did not create untidiness, so it's not real, um, or uh, clumsiness, untidiness, or, you know, or poverty, or whatever it may be, uh, and then, um, so there's, I cancel my belief, that God did not create, and I've also um, had miracles occurring just by God did not create, uh, God did not create oedema in my mother. My mother had swollen legs, and within um, within a week it was gone, just for me just doing that with my mother. So I, I do that for others, and I I do. I mean, you don't have to, but I do a little visualization at the end of the body looking healthy and happy. Mm -hmm. um,